the square root of 8 squared plus 6 squared is just 8 plus 6, right? I mean, after all, it's a square root, and these guys are squares. Can't we all get along here? You know, square root. Is it 14? It's not. Turns out it's 10. And here's why. Here's why. This says, take your squares, add them together, then take your square root. So right? it's because of the addition sign. It's absolutely because of the addition sign. And since this is a grouping symbol, it says do that first before you take your square root. So please, don't just look at that and go, ah, uh, that must be 8 plus 6. That work. Oh, let's look at an example. Let's look at one in your uh, set of problems that I ask you to be uh, cognizant of. Let's see, three, two, three. How about 32 on page uh, 62? I will give you two points. <clears throat> and I'll say, what's the distance? That's how it's going to work on a Thursday. In fact, it's going to work that way multiple times on Thursday. You're going to have to use this concept. So you're not going to get any graph paper. You're not going to plot any points. You're just going to say, I know this guy's x1, y1. This guy's x2, y2. By the way, you think I'm going to... How many think I'll get the same distance if I switch those two designations? X1 and Y1, X2, Y2. How many think I'll get the opposite of the distance? <coughs> hey, remember? How far is it from here to Houston? 90 miles. How far is it from Houston to Bowman? 90 miles. 90 miles. It doesn't matter, ladies and gentlemen, which one I call X1 and Y1, which one I call X2 Y2. That should be reassuring to you. It doesn't matter. You're going to get the same thing. Why? Because I square those values. If you're positive, I get a positive answer. If you're negative, I get the same positive answer. So don't worry about it. Call one on X1 and Y1, one on X2 Y2. Distance is, I got a formula, X2 minus X1 squared. Y2 minus Y1 squared. I'm just filling in blanks. That says 0 minus 8 squared. And that's 20 minus 5 squared. So I get <coughs> negative 8 squared and 15 squared. Notice about there. Every time you square, it's going to be positive. So I get 64. And 225, I get the square root of uh, 289, which happens to be? 17. 17. How, many knew, how many of you knew that was 17? A couple of you? Most of us don't, which means you're going to need your calculator on Thursday. All right? Because you're going to be finding distances. Hey, and get this. What if it was the square root of 260? <coughs> Anybody know what the square root of 260 is? No, you don't because it's not a whole number. All right? So the answer will be to the nearest tenth or to the nearest hundred, what is this distance? So you're definitely going to want a uh, calculator problems like that. Hey, same formula. Just when I take the square root, sometimes it comes out nice and neat, sometimes it doesn't. All right? One application of that is going to be a type of problem you're going to see on the test. Here's what's going to happen. I'm going to give you three points. I'm going to give you the uh, coordinates of three points. <coughs> and I'm going to ask you, does this, or do these points, or do they not, constitute the vertices of a right triangle? In other words, when you connect these points, is that a right triangle or not? And here, how do you know? Here, here's, what you, here's what you're going to be saying. You're going to be saying, I don't think 
it looks like the right turn. But that's not good enough. In fact, I don't think it looks like uh, it's not one of the ways we prove that a triangle is right triangle or not. I mean, look it up in the back of your book. Just try to find, I don't think it looks like up. Uh, it's not there. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is use the Pythagorean theorem. That means i got to find this distance, and this distance, and this distance, and i got to say, does this guy squared plus this guy uh, squared, squared plus this guy squared equal that guy squared, i.e., does the Pythagorean theorem work in this case? So you've got a big problem here. I'm, I don't mean it. You know, something you got to get over. I mean, it's a long problem. you got to do the distance formula three times. Then you have to apply those three distances to the Pythagorean theorem. Like this. Like number uh, 44 in your, on page 62. Now you can plot the points if you want to and try to see if it looks like a right triangle. I'll go ahead and tell you, it will look like a right triangle. But the question is, is it? Here's my, four, uh, my three points. You see how there's three distances, right? Between this one and that one, that one and the other one, the other one and this one. Alright? So you gotta do three different pairs of points. And it may be even confusing to label these guys x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y. So here's what I do. I'd say let's just think about these two points. X minus x, that's three. Minus a negative 1, that's 3 plus 1, that's 4 squared. Y minus Y, 5 minus 3, that's 2 squared. That's distance 1. So let's do distance 2. Follows these two guys. See, X minus X, that's 5 minus 3, that's 2 squared. 1 minus 5. Negative 4 squared. Everybody see what I'm doing? I hope so, because you're going to be doing it in two days. And then finally, is the last two, the last pair is to be D3. And once again, it doesn't matter which one you call D1, D2, D3. It's going to be x minus x, 5 minus a negative 1, that's 5 plus 1, that's 6. And 1 minus 3, that's negative 2. Everybody see how we got those values? X minus x squared, y minus y squared. Yes, ma'am? Why couldn't we just do it all at once? Do it what? So why couldn't we just do it all at once? Like, subtract all three numbers? How can you do it all at once? Are you thinking x minus x minus x or something? Yeah. Like, why couldn't we just do it? You'd get one radical, then what would you know if you got the one radical? One square root. I need three distances. Is the bottom line is I need three distances to compare with the Pythagorean theorem. So I, got, I need three radicals. This guy's going to be, let's see. Have I got this one? Yes, 16 and 4 is 20, right? This guy's going to be 20. This guy's going to be 40. Is it going to work? No. Hey, which one's got to be C? The big one, yeah. That's got to be my hypotenuse, right? So the question is, does a squared plus b squared, does that equal c squared? Can you tell? It does. Square root of 20 squared is 20. Square root of 20 squared is 20. Square root of 40 squared is 40. It works. <laughs> Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. We have just demonstrated 